In the search of meaning uh, and purpose, please do not forget about joy. Don't forget about it. Don't lose sight of it. Um, the joy of being is within you. And so when you feel that joy, that joy is coming from within you, in that what Judy's talking about, from that light within you. I used to think sometimes, oh, because I'd be so joyful sometimes, I could hardly hold, contain myself, and it would be like, uh-oh, I think I've gone over the top. <laughs> oh dear, they're going to think I'm goofy. And so it occurred to me one day, and so I let that go, and I went to the, uh, to the uh, encyclopedia, actually I mean the dictionary, and I looked up the word enthusiastic, because that's what I am. I'm enthused when, I, when uh, I'm in that joy state. And it said that it, enthusiasm means infused by God. Woo! So I went, all right, I'm in. No more did I ridicule myself or feel embarrassed because I thought I'd gone over the top. Because that is the God essence in me. We're going to be working today on several things, two things for sure. We're going to be doing our letter to God. How many of you have done that before? We're going to be doing um, a, uh, and then the white stone, which is actually my favorite. And uh, because there are some of you that haven't done it, I'm going to ask those others to be patient. The service may go over a little bit. Um, so if you have a complaint about that, please put it aside. Because this gives you an opportunity to be in the moment, in the now, in the joy of this process of designing your life for the near future. And so, if you have any feelings or any um, uh, that your life is not what you want it to be, then, and you don't have any purpose, or you don't feel like you have any light within you, I want you today to ask God to reveal to you what it is that you actually do want. It could be as simple as the light. So your life has purpose and it has meaning. And one of the joys is the meaning. God has need of you. I've said that a thousand times. When I read that in um, Lessons in Truth way back when, when I first started my journey, Emily Cady said, God needs you. What? Holy moly. Are you pulling my leg? You know, I mean, it was, it was a whole new concept. I had never thought of that before. God needs me. Well, God did it. And God has used me. And here I am, teaching you today what I, what I know now. Um, and so it is God's good goodness, God's grace that gives us that good will about ourselves and about other people. And God loves us to glorify God he, she, Mother, Father, God, Great Spirit, Divine Creator, Divine Mind, whatever you want to call it. That essence within you wants to be expressed out. God needs you to express out. If you're not here expressing out, God, then you're missing 99.9% .9 of your life. If you're not willing to take within you that power and that presence that resides in you to connect with it and then to spread it, to spread the joy. Mother Teresa said something so wonderful and I'd like to quote it to you. It says, in the silence of the heart, I'm sorry I said it wrong, it is in the silence of the heart that God speaks. And so today that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing a lot of going in within ourselves today. 
It says in Genesis 18.14, and when I was preparing this talk today, this is the first time I ever saw this. And it was, if is anything too wonderful for the Lord? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? So I want to say to you, this is the year that your dreams come true. These words from a beloved poem that I read and wrote down in my journal a long time ago, um, it invited me to remember something, and that was for this new year, which will be here, by the way, very shortly. It's amazing. And the quote is in the poem, wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. This is the year that your dreams come true. Isn't that wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate you. So I want you to hold on to that today. That's going to be our, you're going to be in that internal dialogue. Wonderful, wonderful, fortunate me. This is the year that my dreams come true. How many of you know Dr. Reverend Dr. Uh, Thomas Shepard from Unity Village? He's a, 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 you know, a minister, he's a teacher back there at the village. He's written many books. He writes for the Unity magazine. He probably does a lot of other things as well. He is funny and he is clever and, uh, and he's filled with great insights. And I have called on his writings. I've never met him in person. He wasn't at the village when I was there. Um, but I call on him in his writings um, so often when I need assistance with looking at something f through a different lens. And here is a message that I came about for Christmas, and I am editing as I go along. So if I seem like I'm a little choppy, you'll understand why, because I'm trying to watch the clock and cover all these spaces. But he said that Christmas is the dearest to my heart. It crowds people, badgers them, makes them open their sacks and offer tokens of love to people they otherwise spend too much time avoiding. Christmas makes people vulnerable, duty-bound to honor the possible. We could possibly be friends. We could possibly work together without infighting, without envy. We could get along. And maybe even like each other, we could possibly transform the world so that every child of God can afford a comfortable and creative life free from violence, disease, and fear. So Christmas alters the psychology, the psychological makeup of us throughout the world for this month. And um, It presses people. It harasses them in a way. And it drives some people out into the cold. Christmas is not a good time of year for people. And other people begin to think, well, maybe some of these things are possible. So we're not trying to discredit those that don't feel good about Christmas because there's generally some pretty powerful underlying things about that. But um, what I do know is that it forces the mind to a default setting. Um, that setting that is both soothing, soothing and, I don't know what another word, an adjective would be. Is there such a word as inane? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, that would fit, wouldn't it, in this thought that it that it uh, it's soothing and inane. In other words, okay, you go home and fill in the blank. Um, do you remember the old truism that it's um, it's the thought that counts? As a unity teacher, I now realize. The text should read, it's the thinking that counts. 
So fighting the crowds become mingling with new friends. Um, chores and deadlines and the endless items that need to be done. We can shift into that thinking of making them be easy and fun. All that fun stuff we get to do. Christmas gives humanity an opportunity to pause and believe, if only for a little while. That peace on earth is possible. It gives us that opportunity. We can give and receive love through the holidays. We are comfortable with the words. We're comfortable, we've listened to the songs. Joy to the world. We've listened to those songs and we're kind of like reprogramming ourselves for 2017. We're getting ready. We're getting ready for that. And of course, if we don't get the spirit born into us this year, maybe next Christmas. There's always a time. The day after Christmas, there was a pastor who discovered the image of the baby Jesus was missing out of his nativity scene out front of the church. And he walks outside and he sees this little boy with this red wagon with the, the little figure of Jesus bouncing around inside this wagon. And he goes up to the little thief <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, uh, he asked him, what is it that you're doing? And the little boy said, oh, I'm just keeping a promise. I, I knelt down to baby Jesus, and I asked for a red wagon. And if he'd give me the red wagon, then I'd take him for a, a drive around the block. Cha-cha-cha. <laughs> so every one of us comes here today with a story. Some kind of a story. Um, I've had some calls from people around the White Stone and the letter to God, and uh, oftentimes these are done a little bit later, towards the end, like New Year, and you'll be doing the uh, burning bowl in New York, so New Year. So we're getting that a little. I have turn that around because ordinarily you would do the letter to God and the burning bowl on the same Sunday and the white stone a separate Sunday. That's why I said we have so much to do today. But you do get to do the burning bowl next, at the first Sunday in January, I think. And uh, so today we're going to have two rituals um, that are unity and they're all around the world. Um, there, It's a, almost a complete tradition now. And one is having our white stone, which I'll explain to you, and that's going to come at the end of the service, and it's already 20 to, I've got to hurry. And, um, and the other is our letter to God. And uh, both of these are wonderful anchors to get you ready for the new year. So in a few minutes, it will be time to write first your letter to God. And I want you please to wait until after the meditation. Um, in your bulletin, there is a, an envelope, and I think it's this size. And in there is a blank piece of paper. And I am going to be giving you instructions on everything we're doing this morning, so you don't have to second guess. I will try to direct you. So does everyone have that? And does everyone have a pencil? We do need pencils for the white stones. So, they're on the back of the pew. Oh, oh, great. Okay, I knew Judy had it had it done already. I knew that. I just had to, I just had to throw that out. So, um, what I want you to do is, when we're finished writing this letter, Does that you have written, and I'll tell you when to start. Um, you will fold it up, put it in the envelope, and on the outside of the envelope, uh, you're going to put your name and your address, your mailing address. And then 
when we're done, those letters will be collected, and I'll tell you when, and then they'll get mailed out to you next November of 2017. So that you can look at this letter and you can see what wonderful things have come about that you asked God for this morning. Um, and as I said, we're going to enter into a meditation and it's going to be followed by a time of silence and I hope great reflection because this is one of the most powerful things you're going to do. Those of you that have done letters to God before and you've gotten them in the mail, uh, you can then look and see of all the things that came to pass that manifested in your life because you asked God for them today. And so it's really exciting. It's really a wonderful, it creates for us, let me restate that, a wonderful, wonderful, fortunate me. For this is the year that my dreams come true. And that's the letter. So I want you to get comfortable in your chair. We're going to begin the meditation. And uh, John is going to play softly behind my voice. So the first thing I'm going to ask you is to go within. I want you to get comfortable in your skin. Most of you know how to do that. Let the energy in your body flow from the bottom of your feet up to the crown of your head. I want you to take some good deep breaths. I want you to connect, connect, connect with yourself. I want you to practice anything that you do personally in preparation for your meditation. So this is the year that I move forward, that I move forward with zeal and enthusiasm, giving and receiving, committing to purpose, purposeful rewarding goals. This is the forever that brings happiness. A year that I will live to bless. We get to go back to you, Mother, Father, God, every moment of our lives. No matter how many years we have opened ourselves up to the truth, or not been interested at all. Every year we have the opportunity to open ourselves to the higher truth that Spirit would have us do and be. This dynamic, creative energy of Divine Mind cannot help but be what it is. always creating intelligence, creating love, creating order, creating peace, and creating joy. And at any moment, it is available to each of us. Heaven is that instant awareness of spirit at any moment. And we can experience heaven at any moment in our lives when we are willing to go to God as our source, to be aware of the presence of God shaping and forming our world. So as we prepare to write our letter to you, Mother, Father, God, I say, use me. I stand for you. 
We come to be open. Use me, Lord. That means making me an opening for your divine creator. I surrender to you. I acknowledge the presence and power within me is larger than I am than what is around me. I go into the silence and remember the truth about myself as I begin to write a letter to you. Dear Spirit, precious spirit, stating in my own words and feelings and thoughts what it is that I want to accomplish this coming year with your guidance. And whenever you're ready, you can begin the process of writing your letter to your beloved spirit. Mother, Father, God.
so it is. Amen. And if you're, if you'd hold on to your le your letter, um, if you do not feel complete with it yet, if you haven't finished it, after the service is complete, you may go back to it. But be sure that you hand it personally to Judy, or John, or one of your board members. And what will happen is it's going to be locked up back there for the year at the prayer corner. And then you will receive it. Uh, in okay, in no, no uh, November around Thanksgiving, and it's always such a surprise. You look at the envelope and you see your own handwriting. And it's like, whoa, what is this? And then you get that big surprise. That's really wonderful. So uh, we're now going to slip in to the white stone. And um, we're going to pass them out. And I will pass them out. And before I do, I'm going to say to you, just let your hand touch what stone it is that you're drawn to. And then I'm going to tell you about them. This morning, I have my stuff stolen from the chair. This morning's been my ass in my car. This morning, I can't read this. I have it out of the oven. Did you say, Mary, you're passing the chair? No, I can't. Oh, goodness. So, you have a white stone. I want you to not second guess yourself. And like I said, and I didn't say it, and I wished I had in the letter uh, to God, don't edit. You know, if you're not finished yet, just let what's coming out. May I have one, too? What's coming out of your heart is God's gift to you. So I have many of these, just like Nellie does. I, I, I probably have 10 or 15 of them. And every time I get the privilege of doing it, it comes out different. <laughs> so, uh, and there's a little card. And uh, take one of the cards, too. So, the ceremony is doing two things. And we're choosing our white stone, which is signifying our freedom. And I'll explain that to you. And we are also writing down a name for ourselves on that stone. So the white stone is an ancient ritual. Um, back in the time when Jesus was teaching and someone served time in prison or in bondage of any kind, slavery, you know, bondage, whatever, uh, when they were released, they were given a white stone. And each of us comes from bondage. We, we just by nature are. And so uh, we are being given this white stone then to signify our freedom from that bondage. In those days, they, they um, literally were enslaved. And when they would get released, they would get this white stone, and on this stone, there would be a name that they would put on it. And they would carry this stone with them all the time. And then if they got stopped by guards or whoever, they just showed them the stone. It would be kind of like your passport. And that would, that, that would show them that you were out uh, in... Uh, Ernest. So this ceremony comes from the book of Revelations. Now before you get your, those of you that aren't familiar with it, before you get Revelations, I'm going to explain it to you as best I can. And in Revelations there's a place where John talks about the people being given a new name. And we read, and I quote from the Bible, let anyone who has an ear to listen to what the Spirit is saying to the churches. And the churches were those people whose thoughts were turned towards God, just like we are right now. 
To everyone who conquers, I will give some of the hidden manna. And to all who see beyond appearances, I will give you all that you need, is what John is saying in this passage. Because in the days of wandering the wilderness with Moses, if you remember the story, the manna was sent down from heaven, and all that they had to do was go out and collect it. They didn't have to do anything else. Uh, and it's sort of like for us, it's a smorgasbord or a, a buffet. You have to get up and you have to go out and you have to get the manna. Okay? So, and I will give a white stone and on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. And this is a time when it is believed that the people had overcome uh, and have made their connection to the divine. That's why these, these uh, meditations were so expen uh, important for you to go inward. Because you are making that connection. Uh, that new name is written on this stone. And that name will be given to you directly from God. And no one else will intervene. Uh, no one else will be aware of that name. And I can almost guarantee you there won't be two of the same name, even if you were to, to check. Um, because it's creating within you a new nature, a God nature within you. The freedom the freedom to express that joy and that love and that faith um, when people have overcome. That's what that is. When they were set free from their bondage, they got that stone. In biblical times, a name was a very sacred thing. Every name represented a quality. Did you know that? In the Hebrew language, sometimes they would not name their children for three months, four months, because they waited to get to know that baby because they needed to name that child the word that expressed who that child was. Every name in the Bible actually means a quality that was in the person who carries the name. And I suggest if you want to, to look up in the metaphysical dictionary names that you might be interested in knowing what they actually mean. Because from the Hebrew to the Greek and on down the seven writings, they, they have changed. But it's very significant when a name it means it's said early on in their life and then all of a sudden they have a new name. They might go from Suri to Sarah. It's identifying a new quality in Sarah. That Sarah has been freed from her own mental, physical limitations, so to speak. So you didn't choose a name back then because you liked it or it was trendy. You named the child for whatever the essence was that you connected with to that child. Isn't that lovely? Absolutely lovely. And so I invite you to consciously invite the activity of God, the activity of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the energy that does the work into your heart and into your mind this morning for the next few minutes. And perhaps there is a new career you're looking at. Or perhaps there's a, a new title you want in your job. Or um, a new quality that spirit is pressing you to express out with. And I invite you to give a few minutes off of your ego. Let it go. Just give it a few minutes to rest. And let that divine holy self in you come through. Know that you have a quality. Know, trust me, you have a new name. And it can be anything. 
I've seen people with the word peace written on their stone. I've seen love. I've seen the presence. I've seen um, a, a description of an essence that they are, spirit-filled or infused. You will be invited to write that name on your stone and to carry it with you and to carry the name in your heart for 2017. Because remember it says, whenever we ask, there is an answer. So I ask you to consciously invite the activity of God, spirit, into your heart and your mind for the next few minutes. And I want you to take these words in as I say them. I am open and receptive to God's living spirit of truth. God, I am open to your message for me, to the name, that divine quality that I am. A new name of any kind, Spirit. We know that you speak to us when we are open, when our channel is open to you. So I now invite you all to give to your human self and totally surrender to that power and presence of God, God the good. Let that divine holy self come through, moment by moment. In the silence, allow God to express through you and as you. And I invite you to take this white stone that is in your hand and see it as a symbol of new life. And I would invite you into a moment of simply listening. Right where you are, right now, God is speaking. So I listen for that quality that you, Mother, Father, God, are bringing forth in me. for the occupation, for the title, whatever, the quality that you are revealing to me, God. The next step I am to take. I am. I am friend, I am joy, I am a teacher, I am a healer, I am a mother. Whatever it is that God is revealing to you, and when you get it, don't second guess it. Dare to write it down. Don't judge it. We simply accept it as a gift from the giver.
as the name comes clear, just allow yourself to write it. Maybe it, something like publishing a book, being an author. One woman I know wrote Clean and Sober. Another person wrote Gratitude. One wrote Student. One wrote Inspired. Remember, it is your Father's great pleasure to give you the kingdom. This consciousness of ever-increasing good. And I invite you to carry this stone with you as a reminder of the promise. Now I say if no word comes to you, don't um, judge it. Simply stay open and responsive. Sometime today you may have an aha moment where that word or that insight comes to you. Oh, that's my word. Oh, that's my word. That's my truth. Oh, how fabulous. And I know with all my heart it will come to you. It will certainly come to you. So I say amen. And amen. So those of you that are still meditating, I'd like you to um, feel the, the bench underneath you. Feel your feet on the floor. Feel the Spirit of God coming in and out of your nostrils. Feel the energy that is in your body, which is God. Feel that energy within you that resides in you all the time. So I invite you, if you haven't gotten an answer yet, to keep listening. Often after I've spent time in meditation and time in prayer, things come to me. I've found that they come to me when I'm folding clothes. I don't know if it's the tactileness of the soft, clean fabric or the fragrance of the clean clothes or just being focused on that. And I get a lot of answers at that time. So if I'm going through something, I have a lot of clean clothes. So I want you to quietly trust if you haven't gotten your word. And you can always change it. There's two sides to this. You can have two even, two separate ones if you want. It's quite, quite fine. God does not mind. You have a lot to express out. Um, you just know that this is a very sacred, sacred time. What you've just done, it is not a everyday occurrence. It might be in your lives. I know it's not an everyday occurrence in mine. But you can always look at the stone and you can go right back to that. Right back to that peace. Right back to that knowing of that joy and the loving and the presence and the power that is within you right now. So I say to you, Happy New Year. I actually, I should reverse it. Merry Christmas. And happy, 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 happy 2017. Thank you for coming. <laughs>